titled What's America to Do with the Chaos Agents? And this is, this is fascinating. This is a conversation that we've never had before. At least, you know, in the 20 years I've been doing this show, I don't recall ever having this conversation. And it's the result of a new study that was uh, just recently published suggesting that there is a, a personality type, arguably a, um, a, a maybe you could even call it a mental illness, but at the very least, you could call it a personality type, you know, sort of like authoritarianism. Uh, Robert Altmaier wrote his book, The Authoritarians. John Dean wrote a kind of sequel to it called Conservatives Without Conscience. And it's about how, you know, about 20% of Americans are authoritarian followers and a very, very small percentage are authoritarian leaders. And the authoritarian followers are looking for authoritarian. Anyhow, it's a personality type. Well, what this study suggests is that there's a personality type or a mental illness or a mental condition where people actually crave and want to create chaos. They call it the need for chaos. And they suggest that this, this personality type is driving a lot of the insanity that we're seeing in America today, in our political dialogue and our political discourse. This is not about the traditional left-right divide. There are people like this on both sides. I remember back in the 1960s, a couple of people I knew at the uh, MSU SDS um, who ended up joining wet, the Weather Underground. One of them went to prison for uh, eight bombings and for uh, uh, a armored car heist where two guards, two police officers and a guard were shot and killed. Um, these are people who want chaos. They're not, they're not saying, you know, here's a policy proposal. No, it's burn it down. And we're seeing the same thing on the right right now, you know, from Tim McVeigh to, to the, uh, well, frankly, to all this stochastic terrorism, people who are going out and killing people in the hopes that it's going to, you know, stir up chaos in our society. And the question that this raises is what are we going to do about this? Now, historically, you know, for the previous 240 years of American history, up until really the Trump presidency, what we did with people like this, whether it was, you know, left-wingers like the, the Weather Underground, uh, you know, which pretty much no longer exists, or whether it was right-wingers, you know, like the anti-tax people or the militia groups or whatever, is, you know, we, we either ignored them or we prosecuted them. But the problem that we have right now is that social media algorithms are fine-tuned to reward these people, these chaos seekers, these people who love chaos. Our social media algorithms are specifically fine-tuned to promote these kinds of people and their behavior. And that's, you know, a dangerous thing for our society. So what do we do about this? Well, you know, one suggestion that I have, and, and I, I wrote about this in my uh, next to the last book, The Hidden History of Big Brother in America, is to require social media companies to publish their algorithms, to make them transparent. I, I, frankly, I believe the FCC has the power to do this. Congress certainly has the power to do this. And I think that it's the sort of thing where you might even get support on the right. Although the right is getting more and more enamored of social media since Elon Musk has stopped a lot of his uh, content moderation. And now uh, Meta, Facebook, is laying off content moderators. And Google, YouTube, Alphabet, YouTube is laying off content moderators in preparation for the 2024 election, basically to, to provide the right wingers, the right wing field, the right wing chaos agents with a wide open field to, to, you know, participate in their spreading chaos. There are also foreign governments that are interested in tearing down America that are, that are spreading this kind of chaos that are doing this. And those foreign governments include, you know, Russia, Saudi Arabia, China, uh, it, it, you know, that we know of. I mean, the Saudis own a good chunk of of, uh, of uh, what used to be Twitter, what is now X. In fact, they just executed a guy or just uh, scheduled for execution 
a guy who had said something nasty about the Saudi regime on X anonymously, but apparently now that they own the platform, they have access to the uh, to all the you know insider information, and they can track down Saudi dissidents who have used uh, Twitter. Brilliant, huh? So anyhow, what do we do about this? I don't have an easy answer. I don't have a glib answer, I, you know, outside of the social media thing. I mean, traditionally, we've ignored them because they've been such a small minority or, or prosecuted them, and that was the end of that, like with the Weather Underground. But now, they, they, you know, they've, they actually, many of them are within the Republican Party and are in Congress. You know, two of them are running for president right now, Vivek Ramaswamy and Donald Trump. In my opinion, both of these men just want to create chaos. They want to burn down the system. And, you know, Ramaswamy is unambiguous about it. So what do we do? You, do you have any thoughts on this, suggestions? Like I said, this is a conversation we've never had before on this program. And frankly, it's a conversation that I don't think we've had in America before. But I think we need to have it, especially now that this new kind of personality disorder has been identified by these, by these psychologists. I'll be right back.